after a wild start to the 2023 season with racket releases coming out left, right, and center, the dust has started to settle a little bit. So we figured we'd give you our take on the best controlled rackets on the market right now. Control rackets lost a bit of their cool factor in the 2000s and 2010s. People wanted to play like Nadal with his crazy wild power and spin game, so naturally the industry started trending towards rackets with more power and spin potential. But control rackets never went fully extinct. They maintained an almost cult-like following with more seasoned advanced players, but eventually, like with all trends, the pendulum started to swing back. But what we consider a controlled racket has definitely changed over the years. To me, Federer's switch from a 90 to a 97 square inch frame symbolized a sort of changing of the guard for what was considered a controlled racket in the modern game. In all honesty, and maybe it's because I'm just not good enough, but I don't think 95s are as viable for the general public as a control racket with at least a 97 square inch head size. Don't get me wrong, in the right hands, it can be an absolutely deadly weapon. Just look at Djokovic, Vavrinka, and Shapovalov, but those guys definitely aren't the general public. I've decided to leave 95s off this list. Now that brings me nicely to my next point. For these top five control rackets, I've decided to put them in order, and obviously that's going to mean some notable emissions. So I want to make my criteria as clear as possible. For one, this is not purely a ranking of rackets that are best for control. It's a rank ranking of overall performance of rackets made for control with a heavy emphasis on their control. That means that a racket could be technically better for control, but because another racket has great control and better overall performance, it could be higher up on the list. Remember that when we get to one and two, but no spoilers. Also, for obvious reasons, this list will only include rackets that we carry at Rackets and Runners. Obvious reason one, I need to have played with this racket, and obvious reason two, we would very much like to sell you one of these rackets. Also, please remember to like and subscribe and let me know down in the comments if you like this style of video. I know it's a little bit different to the reviews that we've been doing recently, but it's something fun for me and hopefully you guys like it too. Now, the last little bit of criteria is that this is a personal preference list. I have to have played with and enjoyed these rackets to include them on this list. The reason that there are no 95s is because of my personal opinion, but if you disagree with anything I have to say, just let me know in the comments down below. Now, I'm not gonna lie, controlled rackets are my favorite style of racket, so I'm going to have a lot of fun with this one. Without further ado, let's get into number five. Coming in at number five, we've got the Technofiber T-Fight 305 Isoflex. Now, as we get farther down this list, you're going to notice a theme, 18 mains. That's because rackets with 18 main strings generally have a lower launch angle, which makes them feel significantly more consistent than other frames. The T-Fight has 18 mains, so it has a pretty low launch angle, but where it stands out compared to other tighter string beds is that it feels significantly more spin friendly than what you would expect from something with such a low launch. Now it does have 19 crosses, which is a little bit atypical for something with 18 mains, and that definitely does help open up the string bed a little bit for spin potential. It's also got a slightly thicker beam and middle of the range flex, which helps it pack more of a punch than some of the rackets farther down this list. Obviously that does also take away from a bit of its control, which is why to me it's a clear number five, but it's also what makes it such a complete racket. The feel on the T-Fight is also phenomenal. It's one of the better feeling rackets on the market today, and that slightly stiffer flex gives it a precision and instantaneous response that you're just not gonna get on some of the more classical noodly flex control rackets. It also has a strung swing weight of over 330, which makes it incredibly stable and solid on contact. It's never going to go wild on you ever, which is one of the most important things for a controlled racket. Now at the end of this review, I'm going to talk about a couple honorable mentions, and honestly, between the T-Fight and those rackets, it was a very close call, but for me, it was the consistency, solidity, and well-rounded playability that just pushed it over the edge for me. All right, coming in at number four, we've got the Wilson Pro Staff 97 V14. Now this is definitely going to be a bit of a polarizing one because some of you are gonna want this at number one, and some of you are gonna question its existence on this list. First of all, it's got a 16 by 19 string pattern, which just isn't generally considered as controlled as an 1820. And it is true, the Pro Staff 97 has a higher launch than most of the other rackets on this list, but that doesn't mean it isn't still elite for control. It's not a classic baseline or control racket where you're going to outgrind your opponent by pinging backhands to backhand, 
cross court until somebody misses. It's not that style of racket. It definitely wants to do more than that because it has so much great variety, but in achieving that great variety, it still oozes class and control. It's got a more playful attitude than some of the other rackets on this list, mainly because of that 16 by 19 string pattern, but that phenomenal precision just can't be denied. It has a 97 square inch head size. So the sweet spot is small. So when you point this racket in the right direction, the ball is going there no matter what. Okay, it might be a tiny bit wild when you don't make good contact, but that's why it's number four and not three, two, or one. If you want a racket that will respond with fantastic precision and solidity on the widest variety of shots, so put away shots, slices, volleys, serves, etc., this is the racket for you. Also, like the T-Fight, the Pro Staff is a little bit on the stiffer side, so it's got that instantaneous response that the next few rackets probably won't have. All right, we're getting into the true classic control rackets here, and we're really going to have to start splitting hairs between the top three. Every racket left on this list is an 18 by 20, and coming in at number three, we've got the Wilson Blade 1820 V8. By the way, if you have never tried an 18 by 20, although if you're watching this video, you probably have, but if you haven't, you should really go out and try one. They do feel unique in their stability, consistency, and solidity, and it's a sensation that you just can't really get with a 16 by 19. But anyways, when I went out to retest these rackets and film for the video, I think I realized that I made a huge mistake. Ever since the V8 Blade came out, I think I've only ever played with the 1619 and never the 1820, which is absolutely crazy. As you guys can see, I'm a pretty big fan of 1820 blades. I own pretty much every single good one that's ever come out. Although that BLX is a 16 by 19, still looking for an 1820 there. So trust me, I know how good a blade 1820 plays, but honestly, after having played with the V8, it's absolutely fantastic and might be more well-rounded than the 16 by 19. It's one of the softest blades ever created. So it gives you that amazing sensation of being able to almost edit your shot while the ball sits in the string bed. Now this is a sensation that's very addictive to a lot of people. And it's something that some people almost require to consider a frame, a true controlled frame. What really surprised me on this version of the 1820 is just how spin friendly it was. Now don't get me wrong, this is a still a low launch, super consistent 18 by 20, but it can definitely spin the ball if you want it to. Now I do just want to make a little appreciation blurb about the blade here. There's a reason that I've collected pretty much every single one since I got back into tennis. It's probably my favorite racket line of all time and there's a good reason for that. The blade kind of carried the flag for controlled rackets when they were going through their slightly less successful era. That's because the blade packs modern elements into a racket that's still very much prioritizes control over all else. It has a thin, constant 21 millimeter beam, which gives it a consistent flex that is fantastic for control, but the blade in particular has this slightly different shape that I think is part of the reason why so many people like it so much. It still feels somewhat forgiving without sacrificing any precision whatsoever. It's quick through the air, it packs a punch, but above anything else, the blade is extremely customizable. A lot of rackets out there have a sort of sweet spot weight and balance. Usually it's the stock weight, but the blade adapts very well to any swing weight balance or static weight. It's pretty much the perfect racket if you have your own preferred specs and want to adapt a racket to those specs. For me, I usually play an 1820 blade with a leather grip and a swing weight around 330. Coming in at number two, we've got the Head Auxetic Prestige Pro. Wait a second there, Luca. How is this not number one? Well, more on that later. The Prestige doesn't really need any introduction. It's always been one of, if not the best controlled rackets throughout each of its generations, and that's definitely still the case on the Auxetic Prestige Pro. It's got a soft flex, a thin beam, and pretty much typifies control in the purest sense. Auxetic Tech has definitely improved feel on this version of the Prestige compared to the 360 Plus, which I already really liked, by the way. It's one of the last truly classic feeling frames on the market today. When you compare it to something like the Blade, which definitely has a more modern feel, the Prestige is more buttery soft and consistent in its flex, mainly down to that thinner 20 millimeter beam, but also this Y-shaped throat. When you look at them side by side, you can definitely tell that the blade's throat is a little bit more V-shaped and the Prestige a little bit more Y-shaped. That helps make the blade a little bit more powerful and forgiving, but definitely takes away from a bit of that control. The Prestige is about as good as it gets for a frame that will give you total control over the ball, especially control over where you want to place that ball mid-swing. Now the Prestige used to have a 95 square inch head size, but recently Head brought that up to a 98. That definitely 
definitely helped modernize the line and open it up to a slightly wider variety of people, but it's still the go-to option for those advanced players that want the most control, period. So Luca, if it's the most controlled racket out there, why isn't it number one? Well, you remember my criteria about overall playability over just pure control? That's why. But before we get into number one, let's talk about a couple honorable mentions. I recently reviewed the Head Radical Pro 2023. Check out that video, by the way. And it is a fantastic racket for control. Honestly, between the T-Fight and the Radical, it was about as close as it gets, but I chose the T-Fight because of its slightly more consistent flex. The Onyx VCore Pro 97D is honestly probably as objectively good for control as number four and five on this list, but it is a personal preference type thing, and I'm not the biggest fan of the new shape and the slightly thicker beam design that Yonix went for this time around. Also, I have to say that vibration dampening mesh in that soft of a racket just feels a little bit too mushy for my taste. All right, so the best controlled racket for spring of 2023 is the Head Auxetic Gravity Pro 2023. Now, I obviously don't have one in my hands. That's because I left the demo at the store. So for now, you're just going to have to imagine it. Sorry. I can already hear some of you purists foaming at the mouth a 100 square inch racket at the top of a controlled rackets list? Is he crazy? Well, maybe I am, but at least hear me out. Look at it this way. In the 80s, the best control rackets had an 85 square inch head size. In the 90s, it was, well, it was 90s. In the 2000s, it started creeping up towards 95. And then in the 2010s, it became more 98 and 97 was standard. I'm not saying that 95s, 98s, and 97s aren't still great for control, but it shouldn't be surprising that in the 2020s, one of, if not the best control rackets has a 100 square inch head size. I honestly feel that the Gravity Pro is somewhat of a magic racket. Even with its 100 square inch head size, it still feels just as precise to me as the 98 square inch Prestige. I don't know how Head has done this, but to me they have. It's an incredibly addictive racket to play with with that buttery soft, consistent 20 millimeter flex. Honestly, the Gravity Pro 2023 has one of the best feels of any racket that I have ever tried. It's so stable, so consistent, and has that controlled racket X factor where you just never want to put it down. The main reason why I have it over the Prestige on this list is because I just find it to be a more well-rounded racket altogether. Those two extra square inches in the head might not take away from any of the control Control, but they add spin, they add power, and make it slightly more user-friendly that just makes this racket a better controlled racket for the modern player. Now don't get me wrong, the Gravity Pro isn't easy to use, but once you master it, I genuinely believe that it's one of the best control rackets ever produced. Yes, I said it. I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty happy that the top two control rackets on this list are head rackets. They've always prioritized control over there in Austria, and they may have gotten a little bit lost in their ways during the 2010s, but I can confidently say that head is back. It's not just head though. There are fantastic control sticks all throughout the industry, and it's really awesome to see that we are trending back toward this style of racket, because to me, they really do provide that this is why we love tennis sensation. But that's it from us today. Remember that you can come by the store to demo any of these rackets, or you can check them out at racketsandrunners.ca.